Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Player's Perspective, the interview series where I talk to fellow YouTubers and find out a bit about them. My guest today is a gentleman who wears a variety of hats. He's a radio host, musician, and StarCraft 2 commentator, to name but a few, making him a real jack-of-all-trades. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sin Victor. Sin, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. It's great to be here. I'm, uh, I, I've been a fan of the channel, and I, I definitely dig your interviews. I'm, I'm very, very happy to be here, and I'm looking forward to, to fitting the Jack of All Trades uh, title that you've given me. It's actually a title I've never heard, <laughs> I've never heard given to me before, but uh, it's, it's pretty apt, I, I would say. You could start using it. Yep. <laughs> so you are a professional content creator, primarily on YouTube, but you also upload content to Twitch TV as well, and your shows have included SS Radio, Try Hard Thursdays, and Fr Friday Fan Nights, which where you cast StarCraft 2 matches mm -hmm. where the overall winner gets to face you. And you were previously an IT technician, I think, and so... How did you move from all that into the world of new media? Um, well, for starters, I, I, I've always been surrounded by technology, uh, and I've been fascinated with, with even the earliest, uh, the, the earliest versions of computers. I was always just fascinated the fact that a machine can put something on a screen. And not only can you com communicate with that, it's vice versa as well. The machine tells you what's going on or if there's a problem, that sort of thing. Uh, which originally drew me to IT. Now, the way that I transitioned out of that was that I was always a huge fan of of, of just of, of watching videos on YouTube and um, a, a couple a, a couple names of, of earlier names that I that I was a huge fan of was of course my very good friend Husky Starcraft, who I was a, a fan of for years before I finally started work, to work with him. Um, uh, Total Biscuit, of course, everyone's a, a huge fan of TV, et cetera. And I said, you know what, I I would like to do that because I, I've always I've always wanted to I, I've always been drawn to talking on the microphone, which is kind of odd because in the in the previous line of work, I would normally go to work, which I used to be a bartender and a bouncer, that sort of thing, and I was always forced to kind of talk to people. But in my spare time, I would never want to be surrounded by people like I'm, I don't I wouldn't call myself an anti-social person I just like to keep to myself um, so it, the the idea of me talking on the microphone was it, it, it sounded completely natural to me but at the same time anyone who knows me is kind of like that like that's not him like he you would never hear him want to talk to anybody um, so to the point I decided I'm going to I'm just going to try this I'm I I see people like Husky and Star and um, and Total Biscuit. They talk for a living. I think I could do it. I have the technical know-how to do it. Whether or not it's going to actually, it's going to work out. I have no idea. Um, so I decided to, I decided that I was going to first get into a non-talking role, which was just doing the video editing for a um, uh, for a game called World of Warcraft, which I'm sure everyone's heard of. Uh, and I produced a series called The Word of Law, which was a PvP video um, series that I directed, created, and, um, and edited for. I uploaded those to my YouTube channel, and they did very, very well. Um, I was extremely lucky to have, to have made a fan in the, uh, in the head admin of a, web, of a website called WarcraftMovies.com. And uh, he, he was able to he – was, he was a fan of the series enough to – said, hey, man, every single time you upload, let me know, and we'll be happy to promote it, that sort of thing. And that, in turn, led to more YouTube views. And I, I amassed around 700, and I think I peaked at like 743 subs after the first, I guess, six months of trying to do the whole new media thing. And I, and I was happy with that. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I, I had to get the real job at the IT place. And after that, I was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm just going to do this on the side type thing. Then I got. Then I actually started to do some side things for Husky, and it kind of went from there. Um, I was able to save money uh, working the IT job for a couple of years, and then I said, with the motivation from Husky, I'm going to just do that. I'm, I'm going to give it give it my all to do the whole new media thing, and uh, that's how the transition happened. I I left the IT world and don't plan on going back fixing old granny computers and. Uh, uh, I've I've been extremely extremely fortunate to to have been surrounded by the the friends that I have and uh, that's that's basically the uh, that's the shortened version of it I guess. 
<laughs> so if I give you my laptop, you won't you won't you'll just give it back to me. Oh no, I I I have no I I have no problem fixing friends' computers. I promise you. There I I get I get a lot of people asking me even after I left the uh, I left the office if I could fix their computers, and I don't I don't mind it as long as I have time. So if if you need help with that laptop, Patrick, let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you out with that. <laughs> Thanks, Sin. <laughs> um, there's definitely uh. When you're when you're starting off, there's obviously a whole bunch of work you have to put into creating videos and such. And um, but there's also a great deal of of luck that's involved as well, mm. because someone could be tolling away for untold hours and see very little return, which can be quite unencouraging. Mm. So you really fell into the right crowd, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I see a I see a lot of people um, who get very discouraged by the fact that. They, the the people who are content creators, no matter and no matter what medium, um, the actual creators or developers, if you want to call them that, put more hours into their work than anyone else does in any industry. I don't care what industry it is, whether it be, you know, whether whether it be writing or you know photography, that sort of thing. All all that stuff pales in comparison to the amount of hours that people spend on videos and uh, or music. That sort of it's, it's a starving artist type thing. Um, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it's it's never escaped me the fact that I've been so very very fortunate to have had the friends that that are able to help me get past that first hump. The initial hump is whenever I see someone get started on YouTube is I've got great ideas I I I have a plan I have it all lined out I'm organized that sort of thing. They upload a video they have no subscribers and it gets no views after like three weeks, and they're like, well, what am I doing wrong? And uh, that's where the that that's kind of where the luck that you were speaking of it really does come into play. It's not the old saying is it's not who you are, it's who you know. And mm. uh, that's how I uh, that that's the that is the ultimate reason why I feel extremely fortunate to be in the position that I have been with the friends that I've made for, through countless years of networking and that sort of thing. Um, and it was never a goal like, okay, I'm going to get in contact with Patrick, for example, just so I can use him, you know, down the road so he can plug my, my terrible YouTube channel, that sort of thing. But you know what I mean? When I'm talking about connecting with people, they like your stuff, you, you're a fan of theirs, that sort of thing. And, uh, and yeah, l luck is a, is a very, very big, big part of that uh, equation. Well, one of the, one of the things I've noticed about your commentary style is that it's it's very smooth and uh, relaxed, but yeah, it is also very sort of informative as well. I mean, you're not screaming at the top of your lungs or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it's it's very much you know you know you could just have it on uh, in the background or, or or do one better or and watch the video and you could uh, come away with, with the feeling that you've been entertained. That's, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I've been told that it sounds like a an old timey uh, sports announcer. I think is is what what somebody described as a I think a baseball announcer. Uh, it's perfect background noise for whatever real work you need to get done. But I do appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> From the time so far that you've uh, been doing uh, new media, have you? Would you say you've been able to create uh, that sense of community that YouTube is based around, as it's very personality driven. Do you think you've managed to attract uh, people to you, to, you, to your work? I don't know if I've. I, I I'm not quite sure uh, if I've conveyed the type of person I I am. You really the the biggest responses that I get as far as outside of the person who's Sinvicta, like you, you actually get a, a a little bit of an idea of what kind of person I truly am has been from the uh, the AMAs that I've done more recently the 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 very recent uh, SS Radio 101 a lot of people who tune into my stream they kind of get the they get the other flip side of the coin if I'm not doing a show um for example uh, at the time of this recording yesterday I streamed League of Legends for 7 hours and uh, you know and I I do occasionally swear in that and then I I will admit that uh, and a lot of people find that a little bit shocking because you don't hear you don't hear that sort of uh, vulgarity on on my YouTube channel. And I, I'm I'm starting to slowly ease in ease other people, like especially new viewers, into the fact that it's that there's a professional side of of, of what I do and a personal side. And I think that a lot of the people are attracted to the to the professional side first and foremost because that's the one that you see and hear on YouTube and maybe sometimes on Twitch. 
Um, the the Twitch fans that I have gotten are that those are the people who I who I feel to answer your question would be the community that that feels as ironic and as, as weird as it sounds. The fans who tuned into me every single day on Twitch that feels more like the YouTube community that you're talking about more so than the YouTube fans themselves. Um, and it, 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 again, it's it's a weird it's weird for me to convey what I really mean um, without sounding bat like a babbling idiot. Um, I, I I really uh, the worst feeling in the world for me is when like someone who comes from the YouTube channel t- tunes into my Twitch stream. And, you know, they hear me get frustrated or, you know, upset or yeah, I try not to swear on stream. But if if you stream League of Legends for seven hours and haven't won a game, you get frustrated after a little bit. Um, and they're completely shocked by that. And I, and I feel really bad because I feel like a little bit of me has has, has kind of like lied to them in a, in a certain way. But people people who, who have been long, long time fans of mine know that, you know, I'm that when it's all said and done that this is the type of person that I am, whether regardless of vulgarity and that sort of thing. And I pride myself on making sure that I, that I put up content that is, that is not vulgar. That is, that is very, very uh, family friend friendly. If there is some sort of vulgarity, I can't speak for the, all the other crazy guys that I do collabs with. I mean, you know, I, I did a recent collab with Husky, Jesse Cox and wow Krender. And you know, they're, they're, it, it's, it's a venerable, you know, sailor cussing party. So, um, I, I, I always make sure there's plenty of warning on the videos, that that sort of thing. But I, I, I feel very connected with the fans uh, that I have on YouTube, but especially on Twitch, uh, because those are the ones who, who get to see the the non-presenter side of Sinvicta, I guess. That's that's the best way I can convey that. But again, I it's – sorry, it's a, it's a weird answer for, for that. I, I, don't, I honestly don't know how to really – how to answer that without sounding it without being too convoluted and that sort of thing. But I, I guess that's my answer on that. <laughs> well, you've, you've certainly um, developed one and I'm sure it will grow as time moves forward. Yeah. I'm, I, I love interacting with fans. That's, that's my number one favorite thing about, about all of this, e- even talking to one person um, who, who's, who's a fan of the content. That's, that's it for me. I, I don't care about anything else as long as, as long as it's entertaining uh, to, to at least one person out there who isn't, you know, one of my parents, then that's it's it's all worth it to me. So you're you're also a an online radio host. You've um, you hosted uh, SS Radio, which was your uh, radio podcast where you covered a wide variety of video game topics, mm-hmm. and you uh, re- and you recently presented a, a ten thousand YouTube subscriber special. So. Well, uh, you were you were a DJ in college, so how how were you, was was radio something that you wanted to get into, or did it just did you just decide to do it? So what was the story behind that? Uh, well, the story behind SS Radio itself was uh, was me randomly asking the other S. There, everyone always says what what is what are what are the S's standing for in SS Radio? They ought to, they want to turn it into a World War II thing, which is not at all the case. It's just a very awful coincidence. Um, a friend of mine named Sepperkrod, I randomly asked him if if you wanted to do a podcast. At that time, I was already done with the DJing thing. He said, "Yeah, sure." That's how that started. As far as the radio thing goes, that's the surprising thing that I I led the interview off with today was that um, that's never something I ever thought that I was going to do, but for some reason after Applying the social skills that I had received from being from being in the bar industry in the in the service industry for so long, it, it all just kind of felt natural. Um, so it, it it made sense in the end, um, and it's something that I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, currently, currently right now, I don't I don't have SS Radio running anymore. Um, it was a it was just kind of like I did a hundred episodes, and that lasted for just over a year, about a year and a half, and I. I figured now it was a good time to take a break. I was happy to incorporate that into StarCraft tournaments called the SS Radio Open. Um, but I, ra- radio is something that I, I truly enjoy. I have done guest spots um, for like small time businesses in the college town that I'm from uh, or that I went to. Now I'm not from a college town. Um, and, and radio has always just kind of felt naturally, it, it, which is again, really weird. If you knew, if you know me in real life, you would never think that I would ever willingly want to, want to talk to tens of thousands of people, but I, I, I've never really had any problem with it. And I guess being a musician also, you know, being on stage, 
I figured that I would have some anxiety being surrounded, all eyes on me. You really don't want to screw up this, you know, this song. And I've never really thought about that. So it, it did. In the end, I guess it felt a little bit natural. Whether or not you want to call it a calling or not is, uh, you you can call it what you want, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and would you say the, the experience of uh, presenting radio? Would you say that benefited you when you w- went into YouTube and, and Twitch? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and this is something I did talk about on SS Radio 101 as well. A lot of people they look they look at what you do and what I do, and say, you know, there's that it requires no skills, there's no talent. I I, I have a working computer, I have a good internet connection. Anyone can do what you do. Um, and I always reference back to this to this one person on YouTube who sent me a message saying anyone anyone who could do what you do. I could do it, you know, uh, and I would do it 10 times better, whatever. And I always, and I challenged that person because I normally ignore those type of things. But this time it really, this one stuck out to me. And I said, you know what, I, I, I will accept your challenge. And I challenge you to, let's see what you can do. Please record something. I linked him a video on how to upload to YouTube in case if he didn't know. And I said, let's see, let's see what you, what you've got. And of course, nothing became of it. So in the equation of you know what what is required to do the type of stuff that you and I do on YouTube, it is half of it I would say is luck, and the other half is being able to present it professionally and what I would say is correctly in in some in some respects. You have to be just because you can do it doesn't mean that you will be good at it. Um, and I guess it kind of it, it, if you want to use an analogy to look at poker, everyone knows how to play poker. Just because you know how to play doesn't mean that you're going to be good at it. Um, and uh, and my previous speaking experience on radio and doing you know doing the club stuff certainly helped in shaping the the routine that I have whenever whenever I'm talking on the microphone now and to the point where it's like I don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, there's definitely a great deal of of technical knowledge that you have to learn and be able to apply successfully in order to do this. Yep. A lot of people, they don't realize it. <laughs> they don't know about yeah. audio balancing and, and what happens if this goes wrong. I mean, you, you have to be a one man show. And that's, that is why the, the content creators on YouTube uh, are some of the most talented and most, I don't want to say most intelligent, but I'll just say, tel- I'll, I'll, I'll just say talented. That's the word I'll use. <laughs> Yeah, I've certainly had to do a lot of learning myself to to get to get where I am with this, and um, I'm still continuing to learn stuff. So it's so it's all about continued lifelong learning. Yep. Absolutely. So you're also a fan of heavy metal, and as you've mentioned, you're a musician. Uh, you have a band called The Word of Lord, where you play drums and do backing vocals, and you also had a band in high schools. So first off. What um, have you always been into music? music? Have, do you have you do you have you played many instruments? Do you always want to be a musician? Um, I'll I'll try to shorten the answers because I will tend to ramble on as I've already <laughs> had. Um, but I, I've all I I didn't know that I was a music fan until I actually heard music. Uh, the country that I'm from, I did not I didn't hear music until I first moved to the to the states. Uh, I, I had a little concept. I, I heard a lot of Michael Jackson, um, a lot of the oldies type thing, which is, but, but I was never really just a, I'm going to listen to this cassette tape and just listen to the entire album until I moved to the state side. Um, I played, uh, the first instrument I ever played was the bassoon and uh, that surprises a lot of people. Um, but then I got interested, I got introduced to Metallica and uh, it was the, it was it was a sound it was a, a type of music that I'd never heard before, uh, because I was traditionally raised in the '80s, which was it, we my parents they're they're not rock fans they like the they like the the smooth stuff you know Billy Ocean Stevie Wonder Michael Jackson that sort of thing, so metal was kind of like a that was a new frontier for me. Um, I randomly when I was uh, when I was 16 I randomly decided that I wanted to be in a metal band. Not having any experience, no, I had I, I had no idea. I, I literally sat up in my room, and I had Ride the Lightning, which is Metallica's second album, on repeat. And I said, okay, if I if I am going to want to be a heavy metal musician, what instrument do I feel like playing? 
And the only one that felt natural to me was was drums because I I was always pretty rhythmic when, and that comes from being from from the you know doing sports and that sort of thing. And I said, you know, a drum sounds fine. I picked it up and self-taught. I've never taken a lesson. My techniques are awful, uh, like my basics. And th- that's the reason why you, you will never really hear too many crazy fills in any of the music that I do is because I, 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 if I know them, they're, they're probably copied from somewhere. And then I just kind of bungled them. So I did my own version of that. Um, but, but music, music is now the, the biggest part of, of my focus as far as where I want to go in the future. And I always, the, my philosophy on music is that it is the purest, in my opinion, the purest form of communication. Um, you can convey any sort of emotion or any ideal that you want without having to say a word to somebody. It doesn't matter what's, it doesn't matter what, what country they're from, what language they speak, um, you know, what, what gender, race, all that stuff. It, it, music transcends all of that. Um, and that is what that's what really has kept me into music and continuing on through that is, is something that I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, very much. Music is definitely a, a universal language mm-hmm. and, it, and it can convey any emotion that, that you want. And people, no matter what, where they're from or what language they speak, will, will understand. Yep, I completely agree with that. So, Sin Victor, what? future projects do you have down the pipeline um as far as the channel goes i've got a couple of ideas for new series um i'm bringing i'm bringing back hopefully bringing back soon uh, one of the one of the classic series that i used to do before i really started taking off on youtube uh, which was the geoguessing series geoguessing with sinvicta um it was very very popular uh, the show was actually even though the views won't show up it was very popular amongst my small fan base at the time um i have friends who are who are elementary school teachers and they used to play the youtube videos in in rapid succession for their for their kids um and for those of you who don't know what geoguessr is is a it's an independently written program i don't want to call it a game but it's i turned it into a game where you go to, you go to the website it just drops you somewhere randomly in the world and the object is for you to go to the map and pinpoint where you think you are in the world based on what you see. And I was always fascinated by that because it really does test your knowledge. How much do you really think you know about the world? Not not just talking about what's in your local surroundings, but if I were to drop you in the middle of like a savanna, would you realize, you know, based on the plants that you see or the dirt color or something like that? Like now I, I'm an expert on Australian dirt. I know exactly what Australian dirt looks like, and that's something I've never would have thought of because I played GeoGuessr. But GeoGuessr is one of the is one of these series um, that I that I I really do want to bring back. Um, I don't know how well received received it's going to be, but as long as people are having fun with it, I've I, I've never been a big a big fan of numbers or anything. So, uh, and to be quite honest, even celebrating the 10,000 subscribers thing was something I I originally did not really want to do, um, but at the same time, I didn't want to. I didn't want other fans who've been around for a while to feel slighted. Like you know, like what does he think he's he's too good for ten thousand subs or something? You know that it, it's kind of a weird paradox that that on one hand you have to be yourself, but on the other on the other hand you have to think about how tens of thousands of people would would feel if if you did or did not do something. Um, so whether or not GeoGuessr comes back and stays around is is, that's going to be left up to, to the YouTube, but GeoGuessr is one of them. Um, the album, uh, as far as the, uh, music videos are are concerned, I am planning on releasing uh, music videos for every single song of off the album. Uh, and that will be, I'm planning on releasing the album. Hopefully I would say by mid June of this year. Um, and they'll, they'll have accompanying music videos that I, that I will be directing and, and uh, editing and that sort of thing. So those are the those are the, the other major projects. On top of, of course, doing the Hearthstone content, uh, League of Legends, uh, maybe an SS Radio here and there. Of course, the fan shows on Twitch. Uh, my I, I stay surprisingly busy. <laughs> well, that's the way to be, man. Yep. So, Sen, I'm going to ask you a question now that I ask everyone that does one of these interviews, and that is, if a video game developer were to come to you and say, Sin, you can create any video game you like, what would it be and why? It's a it's a tough one to to really answer because I'm such a 
as used to jack of all trades whenever it comes to a, a variety of different games that I enjoy. Um, that is a that is a very very tough question. Surprisingly tough. Pulling no punches here. <laughs> Um, I've always been a fan of the uh, of the old school. Well, there, there. I'll, I'll give a silly answer, and then I'll give a, a real answer. The silly answer is something that, and I, I'm I'm man enough to admit it. I will never be old enough to say I'm too old for something. I want to see what everyone else wants to see, which is a true Pokemon MMO. Um. And that's going to surprise some people because I, I actually do I, – I did like Pokemon. I don't follow it anymore, but it's a, it's a phenomenal game. And everybody in the world wants to see a character that you create in an MMO roaming around whatever the world of Pokemon is called. I mean, is, does a, is the world even called anything in the world of Pokemon? Do you know? Um, it's not given a, a – sp- there, are, there are specific regions. Right. Like the first – like the first generation of Pokemon took place in the Kanto region, right. I think. And the, 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 so I don't, I don't know if there's a, a particular world name, but it's just separated into different regions. Right. Well, okay. Well, I, I, everyone wants to see your character you make roaming around in whatever world, and you know, and grabbing Pokemon, doing that sort of thing. And that's that answer is going to surprise the heck out of a lot of people. But uh, a game that I would, a game that I would truly like to see uh, would be something along the lines of what the EverQuest Next guys are trying to do, uh, which is a, it's it's focused on the social aspect of M- of of MMOs, but also giving it to the point, giving you the control of you can build what you want and share it with other people, um, whether or not people agree with the fact that that's that may be the next evolution in MMOs is is that I, I leave that up to them. Um, but a, a social game, a social game where you can actually create things and share it with people without having to say you need to download these these skin packs or this this content packs like uh, like Minecraft does that sort of thing. Um, but also have the combat and that sort of thing. You know, I, I for the record, I, I I don't know anyone working on EverQuest next. Um, I, I'm just saying that what, from what I've seen from that game, I think that that's that that's got me very interested um, in, in something like that. So I would say a social game that you can you have the combat, the leveling up, that sort of thing, but you also have a way to build stuff and share it with other people around the world. Um, so that would be my serious answer. The silly answer is I I just want to play a Pokemon MMO. <laughs> well, that would be something to see if it were to ever come out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be the most popular game, I'm telling you, man. The game, they, even even on Game Boy. I mean, look at Twitch plays Pokemon, the first the first iteration they did of that. The world loves the, that franchise, and with good reason. It's a good it's a good franchise. The 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 stores would not be able to keep them on the shelves or the digital shelves if if uh, they ever, if Nintendo ever made a a true Pokemon MMO, one that isn't like ripped off. Or uh, I, I did see that that 8-bit rendition of the Pokemon MMO where people, I I forget what it was called, but it was something along those lines, but it was using like the Game Boy graphics. So that that would be, that would be quite incredible. Well, that Twitch plays Pokemon is, is, I think it's, it's the first step to Skynet. Now the games are playing themselves (laughs) and they don't need us anymore. (laughs) Well, but to be fair though, the I mean the game wasn't playing itself because it was getting input from the from the chat. But I see what you're saying. It was the indirect control. Right, but right. It, yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, if the game wanted to, it probably it probably could have. It, it was a it was a fascinating experiment. I will say that. <laughs> okay, Sin. So, what do you have to say to all of the fans and our followers who have uh, followed you so far on on your journey throughout new media? What would you have to say to all of them? Um. I, I owe you all everything. Uh, I the the best way that I can repay you is by uh, is by doing what I do uh, and keep doing what I do. And if you would like to if you would like to show your support for me, uh, then please support other channels. Not necessarily myself, but support other channels like Patrick's channel. Um, uh, go tell him thank you for what he does and the other content for uh, producer friends that I have, like Husky, like Crendor, that sort of thing. Um, that that is the best way to thank me, um, other than of course the emails and, and messages and comments that I receive. Um, uh, but my personal my personal message to you all here who have followed me thus far, even from way back in the World of Warcraft days, is thank you very much. Uh, I I would not be able to do this without any of without any of you or your continued support. And again, if you would like to 
show me return a little bit of support, then uh, please check out other channels like Patrick's channel, like I was talking about, um, who go the extra mile to put you in contact with someone you may or may not have ever heard of. And uh, that's really all I ask from you. <laughs> Where can we find you, Sin, on the internet? Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash sinvicta316. That's the numbers 316. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Twitch. Uh, my Twitter is at sinvicta. Twitch is twitch.tv slash sinvicta. I do weekly programming as well as streams pretty much every single day. And my Facebook is facebook.com slash the lauder. Uh, that's T-H-E-L-A-W-D-E-R. And lauder is another name that you may hear me uh, be referred to as because a lot of people – a lot of my original fan base know they know me as Lauder, not Sinvicta, which is quite funny. But uh, that is where you can find all my, uh, yeah, all my content. Okay, all of those links will be found in the description below this video if you would like to check those out. So, Sin, it's been really great talking to you today, man. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's uh, it's been a pleasure, and I uh, I hope to be back on the uh, on the show again soon.